We've now said that we're going to model the vibration of atoms inside of a molecule by using the following potential energy function. That the potential V of x is going to equal 1 half kx squared, where k is some constant depending on the stiffness of the bond, and x is the displacement away from the equilibrium bond length, so from the minimum energy bond length. So let's solve Newton's equations and see what the trajectory looked like for this system in classical mechanics. So first of all, um, we know that force is going to be equal to the minus derivative of potential energy with respect to position. So we have minus ddx of 1 half kx squared derivative of x squared is 2x times 1 half k is going to, and then times the minus on the outside, it's going to give us minus kx. <clears throat> so anytime we displace away from equilibrium, there's going to be a force which pulls us back proportional to how far away we are displaced from equilibrium. If our bond gets too short, we get pushed back towards a longer distance. If our bond gets too long, we get pushed back towards a shorter distance. Okay, so then Newton's equations are going to give us that mass times acceleration, which is the second derivative of position with respect to time, equals force. So force equals mass times acceleration, F equals ma. So plugging in the minus kx there, we get that following relation. Now at this point you might ask what mass are we going to use? We've got two atoms and they potentially have different masses. Um, eventually we're going to show that we're going to use the reduced mass of the two atoms in whatever bond we're talking about, but for now let's not worry about it. It's just some general mass that we're going to work with. Okay, so this equation, uh, going to the next step of that, we're going to have that the second derivative of x with respect to time equals minus k over m times x. So some constant, uh, depending on the toughness of the bond, divided by some mass uh, times the position. Okay, so in this case we see a second order ordinary differential equation. We see that the second derivative of a function gives a negative constant back times the function itself. And just as with the classical wave equation and with the particle in a box, Whenever we have a function of this form, it's a good idea to guess as your solution that x of t is a sum of a cosine, what we're going to call omega t, plus some constant times a sine term, also depending on omega t. And then note here that this term omega this, this parameter, this constant, is just the square root of k over m. If you differentiate this uh, equation twice with respect to time, you will, get, you will get minus omega squared times the original function back. So making, setting omega equal to the square root of the spring constant k over m is going to give us back our original equation and that will show that it is a valid uh, solution. Okay. So then beyond this, this is the most general solution. Let's make some more specific conditions. We're going to say that we give it some initial displacement away from equilibrium, some initial value of non-zero x. And we're also going to give it zero initial momentum. So it's initially going to be stationary, displace some distance away from the equilibrium bond distance. Then we're going to let it go and see what happens. Okay, so given that condition, we've said that the velocity at time zero is going to be equal to zero. So let's remind ourselves that velocity is equal to the derivative of position with respect to time. So moving to the next side, if we have the derivative with respect to time of our 
trajectory function, our x of t, and that is going to be equal to, the first term gives us a minus a omega sine omega t, where t is 0, so sine of 0, uh, plus derivative of sine is cosine, and then sine kt is going to give us k sine, uh, k cosine kt, so plus b omega cosine of, and the t term in there is going to give us a 0. Okay, so this sine of 0 it immediately goes to 0, so that's fine. This cosine term is going to go to 1, and so we're going to have b omega. So the next result we have is since this has to be equal to 0 at time equals 0, so at x equals 0, that we have that 0 equals b omega. Well, we don't want the case where omega is 0 because then our particle or whatever we have wouldn't be vibrating, so we want the case where b is equal to 0. So in that case, we see that our sine term goes to 0, and our trajectory is, in fact, a function of time, which is a cosine, and has some initial displacement a. And if we graph this, let's say we have, do do do, give us some bounds here. If we have a minus a, and we're graphing our x of t, initially we're going to have some displacement a, then going to go down and up, and it's just going to go back and forth like this indefinitely. So solving for the classical harmonic oscillator, given some uh, initial displacement a and zero initial momentum, this is the solution we're going to get. We're going to get some oscillatory uh, cosine term with time. So this is indeed a model for vibrations because uh, we know that things that vibrate will just go back and forth and they will vibrate and we'll see uh, what the energy of this looks like over time in the next video.